Hello there, my fellow green boys, and welcome back to another lore video on the greenskins of Warhammer Fantasy. After talking at length about the various kinds of goblins in the world, and the unique savage orcs and the black orcs, today's video is gonna be a bit more military themed. We're gonna describe the main, air tags, cavalry forces of the greenskins. And I'm saying cavalry with air tags because the greenskins do not, in fact, use any horses, except maybe as food. I'm your host, the greenskinned narrator for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The war boar is an extremely tough animal which can be found alongside many orc tribes within the arid deserts of the Badlands. The animals are notoriously bad-tempered, loudly flatulent, entirely dangerous and unpredictable. Ironically, these are traits that the orcs admire, and so it was only natural for some brave orcs to gamble their lives away just for the chance to join the prestigious ranks of the boar boys. Due to the animal's vicious and stubborn behavior, it is obvious that not every orc can become a boar boy. The animal is well known to attack anyone that tries to mount it, killing orcs by the dozen until finally a boar accepts one of them as a rider. As a show of their pride, the mobs of boar boys are known to flash off their status off to their brothers on an almost daily basis. These displays include naming themselves with brutal titles like the Tuskers, the Snorten Rekkas, or the Line Smashers. Warbands of boar boys have also been known to splatter crude boar imagery on many of their banners and equipment, such as icons depicting bloody hooves, tusk skulls, and many similar glyphs. When called into battle, mobs of the boar boys fulfill the role of heavy cavalry, able to shrug off hails of missile fire and bring home a mauling charge which can break through almost any kind of enemy formation. It does take some distance to build up speed though, but eventually the boar's churning legs will get the beast moving at a rate wholly unexpected. The ground shakes with each thumping stride, and the impact of the boar boy's charge will shatter bone and send the victims flying. It is natural in some tribes for a mob of boar boys to develop into big uns as they grow older. The combination of especially large and powerful orcs Riding at the top of equally massive war boars makes for an even more devastating charge. Next on, we have the boar chariots. These things are extremely ramshackle in appearance, created by simply lashing together two wooden logs, a wagon with wheels, and two massive war boars. It takes two of the most powerful of the creatures within a tribe to pull such a bulky thing. But with a bit of struggle, the boars are finally able to get the iron shoved wheels rolling. Many orcs vie for the prestigious right to take a ride in such a chariot. To stand astride its wooden planks is a sign of superiority and prestige over the foot slogging boys. To further show off, many orc chariots decorate their ride by strapping on large banners, flashy streamers, and blood trophies onto the structure. In fact, a popular sport for the chariot crew is to drive their chariots around an orc camp, rumbling by at breakneck speed. Other orcs take great delight in jeering at the show-offs and typically throw all kinds of rubbish at the passing chariots. The crew's need to non-stop show off their flashy set of wheels often result in more than one brawl or scrap. When in battle, the boar chariots are considerably slower than their wolf-drawn goblin chariot counterparts, but they more than make up for the disadvantage by being far superior in both durability and hitting power. Once the churning porcine legs of the boars have the chariot rumbling along at full tilt, it becomes an impressive shock weapon capable of slamming into the foe with the force of a thunderbolt. If the sheer impact of such a devastating force doesn't smash the enemy apart, there's always the iron shoved wheels with crude blades attached at the sides. The goring tusks of the boars at the front, or the spear thrust of the orc crews at the back that prove to be just as devastating. 
Due to their notorious hitting power and frightening reputation on the battlefield, there are many greenskin war bosses who would desire a couple of these in their tribe. Now, lighter, but no less deadly than the Boar Boys, are their counterparts of the Goblin Wolf Riders. It is still not certain how such a cowardly and pathetic race as the Goblins were able to tame the wild and ferocious giant wolves. Some theorize that maybe it is their mutual instinct to pick on the helpless, the injured and the isolated. Whatever the reason, in time, the goblins have managed to gain the creature's trust, albeit at a very steep cost, but at the end of the day it was worth it, for the tribes of wolf riders would soon emerge as the scourge of the open plains of both the Darklands and the Badlands. So feared in fact that not even the orcs dare antagonize them. The wolf riders are dangerous, fast, light cavalry able to outrun almost any creature outside of the fastest steeds of the elves. Because of their dire reputation, they are always in constant demand by the orc and goblin tribes due to their ability to find the enemy and lead the tribe towards it. Many a large and successful was have been led in their destructive rampage by the scouting forces of the wolf riders. In the open country, like the eastern steppes or the heart of the badlands, there can be found entire tribes of wolf riders. These consist of entire hordes made up of the speedy raiders, maybe supported by a couple of wolf chariots as well. Even formidable orc tribes approach these open spaces with a feeling that comes as close to trepidation as a greenskin is allowed to feel. The most famous of these sites is located east of Mad Dog Pass, known appropriately as the Wolflands. On those barren open plains, it is easy for the wolf rider tribes to encircle and destroy any intruders who do not pay handsomely for their safe passage. When in combat, many wolf rider mobs are known to use their bows to shower the enemy with arrows from afar. They lope into range, unleash a hail of bow fire, and then retreat before the enemy can respond. Typically, they often harass the flanks of oncoming troops but they are also known to charge into smaller, more vulnerable units like artillery crews or enemy scouts. Other wolf rider mobs are more heavily armored than others, and it is these goblins that will dare to lower their spears and attack large enemy formations in a headlong rush. However, these wolf riders are just as cowardly in nature as any other goblin, and sometimes they are just as likely to leave the battlefield as they are to attack the enemy. Finally, for today, we have the Goblin Wolf Chariots. It wasn't long after they first started using the giant wolves as cavalry that many goblin tribes began building and fielding the first ever wolf-drawn chariots into battle. Cobbled together out of crudely hacked wood and scavenged material and lashed tight with gut-string cords, they are held as a sign of status in many greenskin tribes. Many goblin tribal chieftains prefer to ride in a chariot, trying to outdo their rivals by having the fastest and flashiest contraption around. Most goblin wolf chariots are often diverse in their appearance and armaments, depending on the preference of the owner. To a goblin, the look of a chariot is very important. Not wanting to pass up a chance to shamelessly show off, many goblins would embellish their chariots with markings, shields, trophies, or oversized banners. Some goblins take this even further, and install spikes and scythes around the wheels, and extra wolves to pull the chariot even faster, or make the chariot bigger to allow more goblin warriors. All of this extra attention comes from mob or tribal pride, but there is a practical side as well. Goblins are notorious thieves, and stealing the wheels of another tribe is considered both a highly regarded feat and a grievous insult to that particular tribe. Thus, the more distinctly marked the chariot, the easier it is to find afterwards. In battle, the goblin wolf chariots charge towards the enemy in a mad rush, plowing into units and running them over with iron shot wheels. When deployed in mass, they are capable of tearing gaping holes in any enemy unit. 
a tribe able to employ several mobs of chariots, can form swift-drawn wedges of devastation capable of sweeping away entire battalions in an instant. Most goblin war bosses want as many chariots in their tribe as possible, being that they are such destructive and deadly contraptions. Fortunately for everyone else, most goblin tribes can only afford to have a couple of them. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the most common mounted units of the Greenskins, whether wolf, boar, or chariot, for today. Although built air tags on the cheap by the standards of other races, these chariots can definitely pack a punch. What about you? What are your thoughts on these weaponized boars and wolves? Do you think they make good mounts for the Greenskins? Do share your thoughts or questions if you got any in the comments below if you want. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. You can also stay more up to date with my channel's content by clicking on the bell notification icon. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and I wish you all a great and healthy day. May Gork and Mork smash you on the head.